السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Go ahead. The awliya of Allah can be only from Muslims or non-Muslims as well. You see, you said in the beginning, waliyullah. How you can be waliyullah and you not belong to Allah? And this is why you learn about Islam, you cry. You should ask what about all these people who is not Muslim but they have quality and they do a lot of good deed or they have softness in their heart and they do this and they do a million and billion of charity when you study in Islam this will decrease the amount of tutra in Jahannam because what's the value of all this if you do it not for Sabilillah Okay, and if you want to know that, you go to Surah Al-Kahf. Go to the end of Surah Al-Kahf. Okay, I will tell you what verse exactly, number. It's all the way toward the end. <clears throat> Read 101. Actually, start from 100. Start from 100 to 105. No, I'm sorry. One, one hundred to one oh six. One hundred to one oh six is one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasize the answer from one oh seven to one ten. Right, so we divided now is a two topic. Okay? Read them. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. On that day, we shall present hell to the disbelievers, plain to view. Those whose eyes were hoodwinked from my reminder and who could not bear to hear. Do the disbelievers reckon that they can choose my bondmen as protecting friends beside me? Lo, we have prepared hell as a welcome for the disbelievers. Say, shall we inform you who will be the greatest losers by their works? Those whose effort goeth astray in the life of the world, and yet they reckon that they do good work. Those are they who disbelieve in the revelations of their Lord and in the meeting with Him. Therefore, their works are vain, and on the day of resurrection we assign no weight to them. That is their reward, hell, because they disbelieved and made a jest of our revelations and our messengers. SubhanAllah, I get my answer from these verses. Jazakallah khair shaykh. Along with this, I had another small doubt. Whether Allah shows the wali of Allah among the people or is it kept hidden? Okay. This is number one. You cannot say I'm wali. Allah can give you a legacy. We know one of the famous story about that, Uwais al-Qarani. Allah considered him wali, and he was unknown. Uh, wali Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, if you listen to my session, Al-Wilaya, in the journey of Iman, from darkness to light, number six, because it's the highest level of Iman. Okay? Highest level of Iman is Wilaya. But are we now a Waliullah? Sure. But in different stages. I talk about it and I will explain it now in one moment. By this way, number one, about. Because this is a notion now. What about all this non-Muslim or non-believer? Okay. Who are having beautiful quality and they do a lot of good deed. Where is he going? And what happened to their good deed? And we try to verify the very beautiful people. But what's the value of all this beauty Allah give you if you do not recognize your own creator? If you leave this earth and do not make one sajda for him and you do not say word, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah. <clears throat> because the first thing is I recognize your goodness. What does a kafir do? The kafir believe I am good. 
The kafir believe I'm, I'm, I have this money, I earn it, I'm spend it. I am good. Astaghfirullah al But the Muslim believe I'm not good. All the goodness from Allah. Allah allow me to have goodness. Allah allow me to spread goodness. Allah allow me to recognize him. Allah give me money. Allah give me ability. Allah give me, Allah give me. Allah allow me to do. It's not me. It's not me at all. This why after that, look at the answer. By this way, in, in, in verse, actually in verse 102 in Arabic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, is the people who do kuf, and they take another people as a wali from Allah. Because what happened is, if you do not have the wilaya to Allah, you have the wilaya to somebody else. What is wilaya? Guardian friend. Or, or, or the belonging, you know, to someone. The one you rely on him, the one you believe in him, the one, you know, you're trusting him, the one he's governing you, this wilaya. The husband is supposed to be a wali of the house. And when he's absent, the mother is a wali of the house. But the word wilaya can be in percentage can be in broad meaning. The, the governor of a town or a, something in Islam called wali. Because he take care of others. That's why if you're governing and you take care about others, this wilaya. And when you are governed by someone, you are a wali to this person. And this why the mu'min the believer, he's having wilaya to Allah by obeying him, and after that, try to pleasing him, and the more you go in this rank, the more the, your wilaya increase, until you become completely for Allah. The moment you are completely for Allah, Allah will become for you. Do you have to be known? No. It's up to Allah to make you known or unknown. But if you ask me, one of the highest wilaya when Allah announced it. We have a hadith about that. When Allah announced it in Hadith Qudsi, and He said, So and so, and He called Jibreel, He's my wali. I love Him, Ya Jibreel. Imagine now, Allah called your name. And he called Jibreel to love you. And Jibreel called your name to the kingdom of angels. Commanded by Allah to love you. And become you become friend of them. And after that, Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you among those who are accepted. Qabul. To explain it to you, Qabul is very, you know, Qabul, you know, and even in Urdu, you know, Qabul meaning accepting, you know, but in here it doesn't mean accepting. Meaning once you meet a person, he has Qabul. Meaning once you meet the person, you feel like you bond, you're close to the person. You see, sometimes you meet people and, you know, I love this person. I like him. He has something. And sometimes you meet a person, I have to go. Let me go. It, 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 it feels tight in my heart. It's heavy. And what happened is, in this topic, they said, the wali can know the wali. The mu'min knows the mu'min. But you see, when we meet each other, we, say, we cannot say, Salaamu Alaikum Wali, Salaamu Alaikum Wali. No, no, no. It's a feeling. It's a feeling within. And it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to spread it. How we spread it? Allah, a lot of people do not get it. And this is a topic of today, believe it or not, inshallah. One person, very pious person, he was walking one day in some places. 
And almost on the edge of the village, he saw a man, extremely sick, extremely sick, very sick. And he kept remembering Allah and smiling and thanking Allah. This pious person, he went and he told him, why are you thanking Allah about? I see your body is so sick. You look like you are in pain. And you're thanking Allah and smiling. He said, all my body in pain, but my heart thanking Allah. And I'm thanking Allah for give me a heart content and a tongue remember him. And this is higher than all my pain in my body. The man was so shocked about his answer. He said, is anything you need? He said, only I want something from you. I used to have a boy. And this boy, he took care about my wudu time. And for three, four days now, he did never come back. And I'm blind. I cannot see. I cannot go anywhere. And you see, I cannot move. Can you please look for him in case he get lost? Tell him to come back. I need him for my wudu. He go look for him. And not even 100, 200 meter, he finds a boy, pieces, and some animal attack him and eat him, and just left over. He went back to him, and he said, do you remember Ayyub, what happened, what Allah did? Do you remember how much he was sick, and people deny him, and his family deny him, and the people even get away from him? from all his sickness. And what he was doing, he was keep thanking, thanking Allah. And he gave him introduction to all this. And in the end, he tell him, tell me what going on. He said, I saw your boy like that. He said, this is the only one who was helping me in my life and helping me to make wudu. And he scream on scream. And he said, Allah, how I can make salah to you when I have nobody to help me to make wudu? Oh Allah, if I cannot pray anymore to you, take my soul, ya Allah, because I'm living only for your prayer. And he make a sound, and he make shahada, and he died. The moment he died, this man said, I saw unbelievable light and a smile over his face. And all of a sudden, I was crying. I was crying because I did not know how to bury him. I'm one person. And I want to give him the barrier he deserves. In the middle of my crying, four people show up and opened the cover over his face and said, so and so, and they start crying. He said, who he is? They said he's the most pious person in the area. I remember him. We used to get blessing from his blessing. And they helped him to get the barrier. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to care about his wali. Life ended. Life ended. By the way, today sometimes we have a notion, oh, a lot of people is good, a lot of people do good, a lot of people better than us, they do a lot of goodness. What about the Christian missionary who sacrificed their life for their message? Where is he going? The answer again, from 100 to 106. That's where this topic can you answer it? Okay, and after that, from 107 to 110, read it, it gives you now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasize the answer. Lo, those who believe and do good works, theirs are the gardens of paradise for welcome. Wait, do you see the first one? Those who believe. By the way, the first criterion, the first element 
you have to believe in Allah. You must. And to believe in Allah, some people can debate you. We believe in the Creator. We believe in God. But you cannot believe in God your way. You have to believe in God His way. What it meaning? You have to believe in God according to the last messenger Allah sent now. By the way, some people believe it or not. Right now, it started. It's a fitna. Some people said, okay, but I believe in Ibrahim alayhi salam. I believe in Nuh. You cannot pick and choose which messenger you believe in him. Quran is amazing. There's many verses in Quran about you cannot be a believer unless you believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And believe in all the messenger and prophet. All of them. Go ahead. <clears throat> wherein they will abide with no desire to be removed from thence. Say, though the sea became ink for the words of my Lord, verily the sea would be used up before the words of my Lord were exhausted, even though we brought the like thereof to help. Say, I am only a mortal like you. My Lord inspireth in me that your God is only one God, and whoever hopeth for the meeting with his Lord, let him do righteous work, and make none sharer of the worship due unto his Lord. This now, this is a constitution. Done by whom? Allah Jalla Jalal. And this for Muslim and non-Muslim. What happened even, you are Muslim, and you do good deed, but part of your good deed, it was not purely to Allah. For people to call your name, or to be famous, you see, or people recognize who you are, finished. It has to be purely to Allah. Zero me. And believe me, zero me is not easy. Is not easy. Is not easy. This is why the early people used to hide their own goodness. To the point, one man, his wife reported about him. He used to hide his own fasting. He used to hide his own reading of Quran. And every time she entered, he covered the Quran. By the way, she would not know he's reading Quran. Why? He afraid of when somebody see you do good, Shaitan can come and tell you, see, you're good, you're good. This is very bad. And this why, believe it or not, when you study the early people and us, we do the opposite. We love to get recognition. And the early people do not want the recognition. Because recognition only from Allah. Only from Allah. Yesterday I was having a meeting with some of the survivor girls from Queen College. Now it's 10 years now. And two of them is sister. They make me very happy. They make me very happy. Why? One of them I ask her, how are you doing? I didn't see you now for four months and more. Okay, tell me. She said to me, what you tell me, it came. It came alive. Now my parents acting like children and listening to me. Before she cannot talk. Nobody listened to her, and her parents was very tough. And now, the parents become like children to her. They take her advice, they take her wisdom, and whatever she said, it will be done. Now I keep listening. She said, and now I do not talk anymore. I do not want to. Every time a situation arise, I look to them, and I said, Allah, I cannot. I cannot talk. I do not have it. Oh Allah, give them this wisdom and put it in their heart. By this way, what she did, she did something very high. When she deny herself everything and she believe in Allah 100%. And this is the whole thing all about. When you deny anything from yourself, it's not your talk, it's not your voice, it's not your knowledge, it's not your ability, it's not your disability, it's your belief and trust in Allah. 
Verse where you can give messages. You can do da'wah silent. Verse where if somebody now he cannot talk, can he say, Allah, I have no voice. How I can do da'wah? You can do da'wah with your heart. You can do du'a. You can wish. You can set intention. Islam is very comprehensive. Even if you disable physically and emotionally, you have no skills. You have no skills. Allah do not want your action. Allah do not want your limbs. Allah do not want your money. Allah, He wants your heart. Your heart. You believe in Him. And now we're coming to the topic of today, inshallah. Because this topic now, what generated is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allah give me a gift. And this gift, very high. Very high. And this is the ultimate gift. This is what I was looking for. Really? When my son called me a couple of days ago and he said, I have a project. And what's the project? He said, I took your advice and I started visiting the sick in the hospital. But now, I want to have a program to massage it, have a program. This program that can be active to every masjid has a program to elect people to visit the sick. But in the United States, it's not easy. Why? You have to be familiar with what called the federal law and the state law, the city law, and the internal protocol of every hospital. And here, hospital is different according to who run it and belong to whom. Not all the hospitals here belong to government. Some of them belong to government. Some of them belong to different religious organizations. By this way, every hospital is unique, has its own protocol. By this way, the first stage, you have to be familiar with the rule of conduct in every hospital. What you allow to do, what you're not allowed to do. By this way, you have to get a course about that. And you have to have all the regulations to get known. And after that, you have to get a permission and I get a license. Once you get a license, now they give you a badge and now you can go ahead and visit. Now there's a technical part. From Islamic part should be why I visit a Sikh? Can I visit Muslim and non-Muslim? Can I visit male and female? And what I should say, and this is a topic I promise him to do it for him. By this way, we can educate the people about the purpose. Why I visit sick is only for rewarding, is only for me get reward, or to get dua of the sick, or to give da'wah, or to spread the mercy of Allah, or to remind the people of the mercy of Allah. It's all of the above. It's all of the above. What is illness? What is sick? Marad. When you study Rasulullah sallam when he was sick and he was, you know, peening from pain of the fever. When Aisha radiallahu she said, what, you, what happened to you? Messenger, a prophet and have pain? He said, yeah, Aisha, we the messenger prophet, we get double or extra double pain. Well, amthal the more you are closer to Allah, the more pain you have. And the opposite. If Allah do not love you, He give you easy life. No pain. Phew! What is that? He take you. No chance for repent. No chance to make tawbah. No chance for anything. And no chance even to thank Allah for His gratitude. By the way, one of the gift in earth from Allah to a person, he give him illness and he give him the patient and make him content and thank Allah for that. 
If you have that, you have one of the ultimate gift in earth Allah can give. And with every pain, with every fever, with every discomfort, you're getting a reward. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erase some of your sins. By this way, he cleanses you completely in this earth. But when you meet Allah, you have zero bad deed. And the early days, they used to know for a fact, illness is the sign of the acceptance of Allah of the Muslim. To the point when people do not get sick very often and pain, they used to feel something wrong with my iman. Allah do not give me calamity. You see, today actually the majority of Muslims believe if I have an easy life, everything is fine. This is a gift. No, this is a fitna. It's a fitna a lot of people cannot comprehend. And this called is Tidraj. What is Tidraj? When Allah plot and plan against you and he take you step by step and you think, MashaAllah, I have dunya, I have money, I have this, I have that. MashaAllah, it's easy. And before you know it, you start enjoying life. You start comforting with your dunya. And you forget akhirah. And once you forget akhirah, finished. Finished. Now, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والتابعين إلى مدين أما بعد رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء ونعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن عين لا تدمع ومن نفس لا تجبع ومن دعاء لا يستجاب له أمين أمين يا رب العالمين اللهم بعد بيننا وبين خطايانا كما بعدت بين المشرق والمغرب اللهم اغسلنا من خطايانا بالماء والثلج والبرد اللهم نقنا من خطايانا قام ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس اللهم افتح علينا فتح العارفين وأكرمنا وأنت أكرم الأكرمين ورد عنا يا رب العالمين if you look in Quran about Ulul Azm, Ulul Azm the most strongest five messenger, you find out all of them has very high calamity. And calamity and trial can be in diseases, illness, finance, family crisis, You name it. A minus. A minus in your style of life. And this minus actually is a chosen from Allah to you. You see? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانِ You remember? Ya'qub alayhi salam فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ Beautiful patient. Imagine beautiful patient. Why? What make it beautiful? Because you are having, you bearing the burden or the pain or the situation for Sabilillah. You see, when you love someone, you really love. Somebody said in the early days, he make a poem. He make a poem about the woman. Woman, unbelievable creature. If she love a man, he can abuse her. He can do many things, and she still, I love you. He make a mistake, I love you. He do this, I love you. He do that. I'm talking about regular woman, real woman. But whatever he do, she still have this loyalty to her man. Subhanallah. Allah give her unbelievable, beautiful quality. And she can bear a lot of hardship. And she still defined with loyalty or feeling to a man. 
And this is a woman, a creature of Allah, a creation. Now, imagine if this is part of the quality Allah put in one of the human beings. I remember, and I never forget it, when it happened, I cannot take it. I was crying and I won't scream, but I went to another room quick to cry and scream. When my mother, Rahmatullah Ali, was sitting in her bed, extremely, extremely ill, extremely ill. And this may be maximum less than a year before she died. Rahmatullah Ali. She's very ill. She's in pain. She has all kind of situation. And then during this time, one afternoon, I have headache and my head is heavy. And she was looking for me. But from the headache and my head is heavy, I took a nap. I don't mean it, but it happened. When I wake up, they call me and they tell me, your mother look for you. I go, I said, my mom, what happened? She said, I was looking for you. What happened? I said, forgive me. It's just my head is heavy and I have headache. And when it happened, I cannot take it and it put me down. She said, oh, my son, I wish Allah take all your pain and give it to me. And you have no pain. And she said that I cannot take it. Why I cannot take it? I went to screaming outside. I said, Allah. She has quality I do not have. The dua she made, she made it so quick. Imagine, she said, Oh Allah, take all here, all his pain and give it to me. What kind of love is that? And I was crying about me, about me. I said, Allah, forgive me. I cannot make the same dua for my mom. I cannot make the same dua for mom. I'm a coward. I'm scared to make the same dua. Sometimes we look at certain people and we underestimate their quality. Believe me today, and this is my message to myself first, we do not have quality. We do not have quality. We can talk. A lot of people talk. But we were collecting knowledge. It's not the knowledge you collect in notes. It is the quality you have in your heart. It's the quality you have in your heart. And this quality is a quality between you and Allah. Where it's coming from? The wilaya, the belonging to Allah. Look at this. Look at the love and loyalty. Look at the strength and the ability to sacrifice. And this is what Allah would deserve. Allah deserves this quality above all of us. And this is why if you have attachment to a man, to a child, to a woman, to husband, to wife, to house, it's very difficult to have real iman. It's almost impossible. And people do not understand. You can have, but you should not have it in your heart. You can have it in your head. You can be a multimillionaire. You can live in a palace, but should not be in your heart. It can be in your hand, but not in your heart. You should not be occupied about it. This talk is, is easy to say, very difficult to do. <clears throat> and now, because I want really glimpse because this topic is so big but so beautiful. If you look at all the Islamic book, a hadith, you find all the Islamic book has a chapter about patient and the sickness and visiting the sick. I will give you a few glimpses. Surah Zumur, verse 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the patient one will be rewarded without no measurement. One sheikh, when I was young, he explained. 
He said, when you meet Allah, and you was patient in dunya about anything through sabilillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his hand in Jannah. How big is the hand of Allah? Is metaphor again, we do not know. And he give you from Jannah for you without no measurement. This by itself is metaphor about what? Imagine you came to me and you did something so nice to me. To take, take this. No, no, take, take, take more. Take, take more. Take more. Imagine if I'm a human being, I have this generosity, and I love to give you more. Sometimes I take, take, take all. Why? Because I'm so pleased with something you did. What about the generosity of Allah? For me, I can give you some chocolate, some cake, something. But Allah, what He has. He will give you from his treasure. Imagine the one who created gold and diamond and this and that and ruby and all this precious stone and this and that. What he has in Jannah. If what we have in dunya is a glimpse, a glimpse is maybe one percent of million and billion percentage of the beauty of Jannah and what Allah prepared for us. And imagine, he said, I have the treasure of everything. And the owner of the treasure of everything, he will give you without no scale. He will not scale. All the good deed, you do this, I give you this. You do this, I give you that. No, patient is not like that. You be patient for me. I will give you without no scales. To the point is many a hadith about that. The person when he sees the amount of reward <clears throat> in the day of judgment, he said, Oh Allah, I wish you give me more. Meaning you give me more pain, you give me more calamity from the amount of reward he will receive. But can we ask for that? No. But we should ask, Oh Allah, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-'afwa wal-'afiyah. والمعافات التامة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم chapter Muhammad verse 31 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said and we will trial you to know who is the one who struggle and who is the one who are patient and we will know all the news about you. And Surah Al Imran, verse 186. And if you be patient and show persevering and have taqwa, this is from the ultimate strength of Iman. This is the one. Now, Imam Ibn al Qayyim al Jawziyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi, he summarized this topic. And he said, diseases are two. Physical disease and heart disease. And both of them has been reported in Quran and Hadith. The heart disease are two. Two categories. One of them, doubt and uncertainty. Doubt and uncertainty. Worry. You debate inside your heart what's going on. This one of the ultimate sickness. When you have doubt about your creator, doubt about his quality, doubt about what he can do, doubt about his goodness, doubt about your future, doubt about the color, doubt about his existence, doubt he could support you, doubt he can. And this is why you find out the person who shayateen give him doubt, they eat him completely. To the point the person has no goodness. The person has no goodness. They eat him. It's almost like a human being, an animal, eat him and leave a bone. That's it. This is what shaytan do. Doubt, uncertainty, 
and unstable in the unstable all this generated this is the ultimate sickness of the heart some people even is good allah gives them a lot of quality a lot of quality and they doubt the rahma of allah they doubt the goodness of allah they are drowning in goodness but they do not believe in allah goodness astaghfirullah alazim this is the ultimate sickness allah can trial somebody with this actually torture torture in dunya and torture in akhirah because if you have that even if you do good deed your good deed is finished you're doubt eating your good deed and another disease of the heart is temptation desire when you are become a slave to a certain desire physical desire food desire money desire uh, show whatever anything material sure allah create us with desire desire exists but it should be governed it should be governed according to the halal and the amount is recommended once it exceed become hawa become the nafs is high and now the nafs looking for it how many people today you know something today i, I i'm going to eat fish today no, no 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 nothing i'm going to eat fish today go get me some fish some people say you know something no 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 today i want pickles i want pickles i want such and such pickle from such and such a store this is scary when you are now feeding your desire what you want when you wake up in the morning or in the middle of the day and all you want fulfill a desire and the opposite if you belong to Allah Allah give you I was talking to a man he called me three four days ago most likely I don't know if I share it with you and this man I met him almost 10 years ago I met him only for 15 minutes this is the only time I ever met him he's a non-muslim I met him in the front of a small restaurant somebody asked me he want to talk to somebody about Islam I was so busy I tell him listen I have only 10 15 minutes what do you want one two three one two three one two three by the will of Allah he become a Muslim I give him some gift some books some this and that and he left and I give him my phone number for 10 years he called me if small and big he called me and this person if you ask me he's not good looking at all at all if you give him beauty from one to ten you give him minus one but he has unbelievable basic Iman. He a beautiful Iman. Very, he's very simple, but he has a beautiful Iman. Three, four days ago, he told me, I want to let you know what happened. I said, what happened? He said, I was traveling in state such and such. I meet this girl, and all of a sudden she told me, I want to marry you. Very beautiful girl. He's in the 40. She are in the 20 and even her family refuse because her family for certain from certain country and he has he has nothing whilst we look is nothing money is nothing status is nothing and this beautiful girl want to marry him may Allah forgive me I said maybe she want the paper maybe she want something she want the citizenship something we said no she's American I said to him, how she treat you? He said, she treated me like a king. She tried to please me so much. And she tried to obey me. Do you know what I came in my heart? She's a gift from Allah to him. Because the only one can do that is Allah. The only one can do that is Allah. Allah can give you in a way you never expected. It's not your beauty, 
is not your money, is not what you have, is your heart. Is your heart. But when you belong to Allah, when you really want to be belong to Allah, Allah promised to please you. Dunya and akhirah. You remember the companion who get the daughter of Kisra? Go read. the king of Persia and they bring him to him he was one time sitting with Rasulullah he said what are you wishing for he said I wish some of the jewelry of Qusra and his daughter he said you get it Rasulullah he gave him a glad tithing he will get it years ago by Rasulullah died Umar Khattab receives the booty coming after the open Persia among the booty they find out certain jewelry and the daughter of Qusra. He said, I remember Rasulullah he said, he belonged to so-and-so, send them to her. He didn't go. He didn't go to Facebook. He didn't make a lot of effort in internet to get married so-and-so. No, he just wished between him and Allah. And when he see her coming, he said, I know you're coming. <laughs> Look at the believe in Allah. Believe in Allah is beauty. Believe in Allah is sweetness. Believe in Allah, what I can tell you, it gives you this unbelievable feeling. Nobody can give you the same. Nobody. Nobody. And when you have that, now you will have the beauty of the sweetness of Iman. We talked about it a week ago. And if you have sweetness of Iman, nobody can measure it. And nobody can imitate it. And nobody can take it away from you. And nobody can give you even a debt of similarity. No joy, no pleasure in this dunya can give you what Allah can give you. This dignity within, this beauty within, this happiness within, this tranquility within, this belonging within. Ya Allah. Ya Allah. And he promised to take care about you. If you leave two things. When you have Iman and you leave the doubt. And when you deny your treasure or pleasure for Sabilillah. He will give you the pleasure from him. And at this time, every time you get a piece of pleasure. You will enjoy thanking Allah more than the pleasure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to emphasize what we're talking about it in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 10 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the hypocrite and non-believer fi qulubihim maradun fazadahumu Allahu marada in their heart is a disease Allah increased their disease In Surah An-Nur, chapter An-Nur, verse 48 to 50, Allah explained about the hypocrite. What's their style? And if you call them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge between them, a group of them will deny. Today, you have a business partner, husband and wife, family member, inheriting between children, the mother died, somebody happened. Come, come, come. Let's follow Sharia. Let's follow Allah wa Rasulullah. No, no, it's mine. Yeah, yeah. Astaghfirullah al -Azim. If a person do that, in their heart is a disease. You cannot deny the word of Allah. You cannot deny the word of Rasulullah sallallahu if you deny it, meaning you are sick. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end of the verse 50, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He emphasized what their status in their heart is a disease. 
and the doubt. And in the end, Allah called them They are the oppressed one, the oppressor one, the oppressor and aggressor, Zalimun. If you ask me today, the majority of us is a Zalim. Why you see all this killing? Why you see all this mischief? Because us. A Muslim generates justice. If you have justice within, you spread justice outside, you have justice to yourself, justice to a husband, justice to wife, justice to kids, justice to environment. But if you oppress yourself, you oppress other, you will never be good to anybody. Why? Sickness of the heart. And in Surah Al Ahzab, chapter Al Ahzab, verse 32, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalalu, He gives us a glimpse of something happened. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a message to the wives of Rasulullah, He said, Ya Nisa an Nabi, O the wife of the Prophet, you're not like any another woman. If you obey Allah and have taqwa, don't allow yourself to hear what others say. By this way, some people might have disease in the heart and they feel they can do something or know something or whatever. By this way, Allah warning the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa not to listen to other. The wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is a metaphor for all of us. If this command and advice from Allah to the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa what it means for me? Yes, this is especially for them. But it should be a metaphor and, and a constitution for me. What it means, for example? Don't talk to somebody in a sweet voice. That's why he misunderstands you. Don't listen to gossip. Don't let allow yourself to hear dirty about somebody. That's why the command in here, be careful about your ear. Don't allow your ear to hear garbage. Something can dirty your heart. In the meantime, there's a lot of verse in Quran about those who are sick in Hajj, sick in the time of Ramadan. Allah said, don't worry about it. Look at the different talk. Don't worry about it. You're sick in Hajj, don't worry about it. Fast later on. You cannot do this, don't worry about it. You cannot fast Ramadan, you cannot fast certain day in Ramadan, don't worry about it. Imagine, don't worry about it. <clears throat> you have something in your head and you cannot shave in a time of Hajj this is for men, don't worry about it just pay fidya pay some charity to poor people but with a physical disease you find out the language of Allah about physical disease is very simple and very soft Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said of the meaning of Get cure from your disease. Because Allah does not send a disease without sending a cure. Believe it or not today, I can send you later on. A woman in America, she's now spreading message all over. I can send it to you. If you see it, you cry. She has MS, multiple osclerosis. Very dirty disease, attacks the nerve system. She went to the toughest university and the hospital in America specialized in multiple sclerosis. She take top, top known medication now. And she said the disease was progress. And the more I take medication, I went to the point I become paralyzed. I cannot walk. I have to be using wheelchair. I have no control over my grips. I cannot hold something. 
<clears throat> and in the beginning of her life, she was martial art person. Now she's in a wheelchair. She said, after that, I started to study by myself my disease. And I came to a conclusion. My disease is minus this element and this element and this element in my body. And I find out this food and this food and this food can benefit me. I start eating them. In one month, I was able to grip. In two months, I was walking with a cane. In one year, I was riding a bike. And what she start? She start curing herself by different food. Only food. Food. She stopped all the medication. When she was under all the top medication in the top university, okay, she gets so sick. And when she stopped all the medication and start eating certain food, it's done. A few months ago, they discover one fruit in Malaysia is cancerous. Whoever eat it, his cancer shrink. Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Allah descended the disease. And with every disease, he descended the cure. Imagine. The non-Muslim, the non-Muslim today believe in Allah, and we do not believe in Allah. We seek the support from other. I remember one man, his wife was a non-Muslim. She embraced Islam. Do you know what she is famous with? She cure people by herbs. She cure people by herbs. For example, even if you want antibiotic, she said, don't take antibiotic. Because antibiotic is the best antibiotic located in this food and this food and this food. And if you study the fresh antibiotic, fast to act, very good for the body, no side effect. Anybody know that? Do you familiar with something called golden seed or golden seal? It's like a, like a, like nutmeg, something similar. You take it and you grind it and become powder. This is antibiotic. Very high to increase the immune system and strengthen it. I don't remember the names because some of this name, I'm not familiar with it. I cannot pronounce it. My tongue do not allow me. Really, I grew up this way. This way, alhamdulillah. I will never be famous. Because nobody would like my voice. It's so broken English, so broken accent. You hardly understand. Alhamdulillah. But I hope, inshallah, I will be famous in the kingdom of Allah. Vice way is a cure with Allah. If you look for it, wallahi, you find it. Wallahi, you find it. We need a dot of Iman, dot of trust. And we talk about the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You find it in Ibn Majah wa Tirmizi, an authentic hadith. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, of the meaning of Al-Anbiya, thumma Al-Amthal wa Al-Amthal. Meaning what? He said, the most people be having calamity and sickness is messenger and prophet. After that, best among them. And the best, and the best, and the best, and keep going. And Allah, Rasulullah he said, and everybody will get calamity according to the amount of deen. If Allah know his deen and his iman is strong, he give him more. Don't ask for disease now. Don't ever. But ask Allah for al-af wa al-afiyah. 
And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a continuation of the hadith, he said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he give you calamity according to your iman until this calamity or disease cure you from all the diseases, by this way you walk and you have no any, any sins in your heart. No sins against you. Just by the disease and the pain. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sunan al-Tirmizi he said the people who have health in the day of judgment they will wish to have some disease because they see what happened to them and what happened to the people who was ill. And another hadith In Ibn Habban and Majma' al Zawaid Lil Imam al Haythami, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said of the meaning of the man or the person, he has a certain stage between him and Allah. Meaning Allah put you in a certain stage, certain level, but you do not reach it by your deed. You're so weak, you cannot reach it. He keep give you calamity. He keep give you calamity one after another. Until you reach it by purifying you. Or, for example, you want something, you wish for th- something. Allah will not give it to you. It's a calamity to trial you. Surrender. Surrender to Allah. Don't be stuck. You can keep your wish, you can keep your desire. And said, Allah, if it's not written for me to give it to me now, give it to me in a day of judgment, ya Allah. Be abd. By this way, the calamity is not illness only. Again, illness or minus or something Allah take from you. Money status again, love story, something you know, something you want, something you desire. What about even a person who loves certain sweet? And the doctor tell him, no, you are diabetic. If you eat sweet, you die. But I want sweet. You can't. Some people love salty things, but they have high blood pressure. The doctor said, no salt for you. <gasps> yeah, Allah, I love salt. Look at human being. <laughs> and you find the people have high blood pressure. They are so addicted to salt. And the, the more salty, the more they enjoy it. And if you eat what they eat, I don't like it. It's too salty. <gasps> it's delicious. Subhanallah about the nafs of a human being. To the point, I meet people, may Allah forgive them. Some of them is dead. One brother, mashallah, he was a beautiful brother. He had very high blood pressure. And one day, we cook and we serve him. And he said, give me salt. Somebody tell him, tell me, don't give him salt. His high pressure is high. It's very dangerous for him. He told me, please, allow me, make me happy. I said, I'm going to give you a little bit. I bring the salt or the salter. I try to give him the cap fall out. And a big amount of salt fall down. This man had beautiful iman, beautiful iman. Somebody look at him. He said, look at the amount of salt. It can kill him. He said, listen, if it will kill me, I have to eat it. And if it's written for me to be alive, it will not do anything. This man, believe it or not, the following week, just a few minutes before Fajr, he had a rupture in his heart. A few hours later, he was dead. But Rahmatullahi Alayhi, his janaza was so beautiful, so beautiful, so beautiful. One of the beautiful janaza I ever seen in my whole entire life. Why? His iman was so beautiful. His manner was so beautiful. His generosity is massive. His generosity is massive. To the point he always have debts. He has a lot of money. People own him money. And do not give it to him. 
And if you go and you seek money from him, he go borrow money to give it to you. What kind of generosity is that? How many people can do that? How many people can be free like that? This Iman. If you think your Iman is a note in your notebook, no. Your Iman is your quality and what you can do. Is many a hadith about that. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this hadith muttafaqun alayh, meaning in Sahih Muslim and Bukhari and other authentic hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, al mu'min min nasabin wala nasabin wala saqamin wala hazin hatta alham yahmu illa kaffara bihi min sayyat. What it mean? He said, the min. No wasab, meaning disease. Wala nasab. Fatigue or body ache, wala saqamin, no any sickness or illness, wala hazanin, no any calamity or something make you upset. Somebody call your name, somebody insult you, somebody oppress you. All this is what? Even he said, even him. What is him? Ache. Mental ache. Somebody bother you. Your daughter bother you. Your son bother you. Your husband bother you. Your wife bother you. Somebody bother you. Bother you so much. Not treat you nice. Something bother you. Finance situation. Whatever situation. Rasulullah said, all this, it cleans your sins. It cleans your sins. By this way, this topic about illness and hardship is very vast. And when you read about the hadith about that is a lot. To the point you find some books containing a chapter. The chapter said, the benefit of fever. Only in Islam. The benefit of fever. Because fever from Jahannam. By this way, illness and fever is a gift. Imagine a gift. Today we think when somebody's sick, he's sick, she's sick. And when somebody's healthy and have money and everything is going fine, we think it's just so good. No. This has a problem. Do you think? Do you know when you when you think about all this topic, what is it? Because Allah prepared us for akhirah. What's the problem of us today? We want to do it. We want to do it. We sit with our tongue, Akhira. And this is why one of the famous dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, As'aluka min al-yaqeen, ma tuhawwun alayya bihi masaib al-dunya. Oh Allah, I ask you from yaqeen, from the certainty of faith, what make it easy of the calamity of dunya? What makes the calamity of dunya easy? Yaqeen. 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 Yaqeen is power. Yaqeen is power. We need it. This is the real ammunition to pass this dunya. And when Allah talk about Ayyub, inna wajnadnahu sabira, we will find him patient one. Na'ma al-abda innahu awab. He's the best servant. He's awab. Awab meaning what? He always cry and make dua. <coughs> and Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter Al-Anbiya, verse 83, when Allah talk about Ayyub, وَأَيُّوبْ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسْنِيَ الدُّرْ 
وأنت أرحم الراحمين Why Allah give us the story of Ayyub? If you read the story of Ayyub alayhi salam, you really cry. And when you look what Allah give him later on, 18 years approximately illness, 18 years. And his wife tell him, Ya Ayyub, make dua. He said, I'm shy. Allah always give me all his goodness. How I cannot be, you know, make dua to Allah. I'm shy to make dua. She said, I know if you make dua, Allah will accept. And look when Allah ordained it. Only when some rumors spread. The rumors spread, they said, Ayyub is a sinner. He committing many hidden sins. This is why Allah gave him disease. At this moment, he was upset. Not for himself. Because his, his, the news are against him. He said, Allah, you know me, and you know my relationship with you. Oh Allah, cure me just by this way they do not do that and become a fitna against me. This is what happened inside of him. And after that, he makes his dua. And this moment, Allah accepts his dua, just like that. Can you be cured just like that? Sure. Amen. Iman and when it's written, both. Meaning deep inside you have to know, Allah is capable, Allah is able, his might is only if he want in the time he want. Verse for you, one of the adab, you said, oh Allah, if my illness is written for me and is from you, to purify me and clear me. Let it be and give me patience and persevering and allow me to be thanking you. But Ya Allah, I am wishing for lutf from you, from your Rahmah. I'm not denying it. I'm not aggravated. I'm not complaining. It's just I'm seeking your af. Deal with me with af. Deal with me with generosity. You see? But this needs a state of surrender, not complaining. State of surrender, not complaining. And there's many example in Islam about companion, how they were burdened. <coughs> Surah Rad, chapter Rad, verse 24. People like that, they will get a special clothing from Jannah. And when they enter Jannah, the angel will say, Salamun alaykum, bima sabartum, fana'ma uqbadda. Peace be with you, with all the patience you exercise in your dunya. Go, go to your palaces in Jannah. This is the best resident. And this why, when you think about it, some scholar put it into word. And this word is in hadith of the meaning of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has levels. This level do not be rich except with patience in the time of calamity and thanks in a time of a gift and to fear Allah in the seen and unseen and to keep your tongue remember Allah what make us able to do that when you think about akhirah if you're living for akhirah anything go 
really anything go. You find anything like one pious woman, she used to say, Allah, if you allow me to go to Jannah, whatever you give me or do not give me, whatever you deny me, is it from you? I accept it with my pleasure. You remember when Musa alayhi salam asked Allah, Oh Allah, how I thank you and all the bounty from you. And if I thanking you, you thanking me. And thanking me, you reward me from thanking you. How I thank you, Allah. How? He said, Ya Musa, if you know everything from me, you're thanking me. A lot of people do not understand this. Everything from me. Tell me one thing you do not have, from, not from Allah. Even any situation. Even the temptation, even the desire, even the doubt. It's not from Allah, astaghfirullah al azim but cannot happen without the knowledge of Allah. What it mean? Call Allah. You have shayateen, call Allah. You have a disease, call Allah. You have doubt, call Allah. You cannot reach such and such, call Allah. You have poverty, call Allah. You have weakness, call Allah. You're sick, call Allah. You're good, call Allah. You have bounty, call Allah. You need something, call Allah. You do not need something, call Allah. This is what the whole thing is all about. Allah give you, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah. Allah did not give you, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, and you believe without no doubt. What Allah did not give you is for you. What Allah did not give you is for you. Look at the people who has a lot of money, what happened to them. Look at the people who have a status, what happened to them. Do you want to be the same? Sometimes today we ask Allah for things and we do not know. Allah, if he done deny you something, is for your goodness. Because Allah give and take for you. Allah for you. Just to always say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This is the bounty. The ultimate gift Allah can give you, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The ultimate gift Allah can give you, contentment. Remember this Indian man, he said, my crown is not in the top of my head. My crown is not in the top of my head. But in my heart, is not studded, is not studded with diamond and precious stone, but is a contentment which King seldom enjoy. Contentment is a gift from Allah, the Jannah of Allah in earth. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma aafini fi badani, Allahumma aafini fi sam'i, Allahumma aafini fi basari, la ilaha illa anta. Now, remember this hadith about visiting the sick. This is just introduction quick, and I'm going to go through something now. Why we visit the sick? If you go to the chapter of that and read, you really cry. Whoever visits the sick, 70,000 angels will be with him until he go in the evening. 70,000 angels will be your companion just to visit a sick person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Hadith Qudsi, and this is located in, in Muslim, Sahih Muslim. 
Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, in the day of judgment, son of Adam, I was sick. Why you didn't visit me? The person will reply, Ya Rabbi, how I visit you and you are Rabbul Alameen. He said, did you know if you visit the sick person such and such, you will find me with him? Ibn Adam, I ask you to feed me. Why you do not feed me? The person reply, Oh Allah, how I feed you, and you are Rabbul Alameen. Allah reply, Did you not know if you feed so and so like you feeding me? And you are with, you will find me with him. Ibn Adam, son of Adam, I need to drink. Why you did not give me a drink? He said, Ya Allah, how I give you a drink and you are Rabbul Alameen. He said, did you not know if you give so and so a drink, you will find me with him? And this is why when you go to this a hadith, you cry. We talked about it before. Why? Because when you visit a sick, Allah with a sick person. And when you go visit the sick, go with the intention to remind the person of the rahmah of Allah, the bounty of Allah. You make dua for the sick, and after that you ask the sick person to make dua for you. And you leave. What happens if it's a hospital? You have a chance to give dawah to the relative. And to elevate the spirit of the person. And again, it benefits you. And I promise you, when you're leaving, your heart will be calm and broken. And full of thanks and joy. Why? Why? Because you're thanking Allah. You still walk. You still have ability. You have a chance. Shame on us. Shame on us. How many good deed we deprive ourselves from it. We deny ourselves from it. This session is not a session of talk and listening. You should make teams and you visit the sick. And when you visit the sick, actually it opens something else. It opened also the door of da'wah, the door of charity. He said, I have no money, whatever you can. And if you do not have, I go house to house, store to store, collecting money and go support. Go open the chapter of helping other. One of the chosen people, the one who help other. This is the real worship. You can do a lot. You can do a lot. Rich and poor. Muslim and non-Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he as a boy was working for him, and he was a Jewish boy, and he got sick. What Rasulullah sallam did? He went to him, and he visited him, and he was dying. He gave him da'wah, and tell him, say, I will be witness for you in the day of judgment. The boy look at his father, the Jewish father. The Jewish father tell him, listen to Abul Qasim. Listen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The boy embraced Islam and he died. Rasulullah sallam left very smiling. The companion asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why are you so happy and smiling? He said, one soul from the son of Adam, I save it from Jahannam. Rahmah. Rahmah. Read the hadith about Rahmah. Whoever have Rahmah, Allah give him Rahmah. 
Whoever do not have rahmah, Allah will never give him rahmah. Astaghfirullah al -Azim. What's the value of all the knowledge we hear if we do not have rahmah? If we see people in calamity and we do not do nothing about it, what kind of people we are? How many people will remember us? And a lot of us still have time. You have time. You have time. You have health. And Rasulullah he said, two gift the majority of people do not value. Time and health. And all of a sudden you have no time when the angel of death come. And the health will be taken away as soon or later. The health is not forever. Your time is not forever. Being exists in this life is not forever. Is this not the journey of Iman? The journey of Iman, you try to get anything before you die. You grab whatever opportunity of goodness before you die. And if you're wasting your time and you're not doing something, something wrong with your heart. Don't blame nobody. Like I tell you, you can visit the sick and give them just salam. Make dua for them. Tell them to make dua for you and leave. Just like that, two, three minutes. You can visit 10, 15 people a day. And how long it will take you? One hour, two hour? And how many thousand and thousand of angels will be with you? How much it will cost you? You have no gas, you have no time, money for richer. Go, sister, so and so. Give me 100 rubies, give me 200 rubies. I want to go visit sick. There's no excuse. There really is no excuse of good deed. You never know. You know, sometime when you go visit the sick, the sick look at you and tell you, you make me happy. Go. May Allah make you happy the way you make me happy. They can make unbelievable dua for you. Allahu Akbar. And the dua of the sick is accepted. Look how much we are denying our self-goodness. One of the visit can give you what no any place on earth can give you. You tell me you do not have even one time in a week? Imagine if every one of us have one day or three, four hour a week, and you take, today, Sarah takes this hospital, tomorrow, Sister Shireen, tomorrow, Sister so and so. And we make a list of those who can need help, and you try to collect and help. And you go to their houses and help them. And they now crying and make dua for you, or they need medication. How many people desperate of something? Or is so old and you get them some food and some fruit? This visit by itself, how much in the eye of Allah will make you famous? This will make you famous, dunya and akhirah. If you see somebody crying and screaming and making dua for you, you will wish every day, every day you visit sick. And it always will make you humble and thank Allah. And will never, get this, just visiting the sick, it will make you always content and drowning in thanking Allah and take away the disease of your heart. Because you will see people less fortunate than you. Because when you see sick all the time, it makes you thanks to Allah. You still have teeth. You still can go to the bathroom. You still can walk. You have hand. Do you know Al Jazeera and uh, news, uh, whatever station, they have documentary only about last year or the year before about how many people lost their eyes in demonstration. Just demonstration, how many people become blind? We have plenty to thank Allah for. 
Do you value that? Do you value the bounty of Allah? Do you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his bounty? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us the manner of visiting the sick to be short unless they tell you stay. Unless they tell you stay. And you cannot visit them the time you want. You have to study what is the best time for them. You'd not go to them in a time of changing or the time of medication or when they are sedated or they have some whatever. No. You have to ask. And like I tell you, you can meet the neighbors and parents, the relative. It's a beautiful time to do a lot of da'wah. And if the if you go to the elite hospital, you can even invite them to do good and make them make charity and take their money and go to the poor hospital. The one has poor people. They need a lot of help, a lot of support. Look at how much you can do. Look at how much you can do. All my talk is what it means, what? Iman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after Fajr he used to ask who visit the sick today? Abu Bakr said me. Who walk in janazah? Abu Bakr said me. Who wake up fasting? Abu Bakr said me. Who give charity? Abu Bakr said me. Fajr arrive and very soon the death will arrive and we'll meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Life is a chance. Today we can, tomorrow we cannot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tongue, remember him, and a heart thanking him, and body patient with him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us al-af wal-afiyah, wal-mu'afat al-tamah, fi al-deen wa dunya wa al-akhirah. And O oh Allah, don't make our calamity in our deen. Don't make our calamity in our deen. And make us believe in you, trusting you, rely on you, loving you, believe in you, try to pleasing you, serving you and serving the message of you, Ya Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Oh Allah, allow us, Ya Allah. We are weak, we do not have the quality. Give us the ability, Ya Allah. There's no ability except ability from you, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, please, Ya Allah. Don't make us waste whatever time left in our life and make us the keys of spreading goodness, Ya Allah. Cleanse our heart from all the attachment of dunya. And O oh Allah, make us among those who do good deed purely to you, for you, Ya Allah, to elevate your name. O oh Allah, we know we do not deserve it, but you are the owner of quality. Decorate us for our quality from your quality, Ya Allah. And make us among those who elevate the calamity of others, Ya Allah. And spread goodness in earth, Ya Allah. Ameen, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanaka Rabbil Aizati Amma Sifun. Wa salamun al mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh. Wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billahi al-alayhi al-azim. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته